Now, the pathophysiology of ASD. In ASD, there is a communication between left atrium and right atrium. We know that in the left atrium, there is more pressure than the right atrium. So there is a pressure gradient in between left atrium and right atrium. And blood follows that gradient. So that blood flows from left atrium to right atrium. This is called shunt. So in ASD, the shunt is left to right shunt. And ASD is called asionotic congenital heart disease. Why? Because we know that in the left atrium there is oxygenated blood and in the right atrium there is deoxygenated blood. So in ASD blood goes from left atrium to right atrium. That means oxygenated blood is going and mixing with the deoxygenated blood. So no problem with that. Only problem is the volume in the right atrium increases so that the right ventricular volume is also increased. So due to that volume overload, there is continuous stretching on the ventricular wall and there may be right ventricular hypertrophy. There may be pulmonary hypertension and there may be heart failure. Now the clinical features of ASD. So the symptoms of ASD may be asymptomatic, there is exertional dyspnea, there is recurrent respiratory tract infections, there is fatigue palpitation. So now why there is exertional dyspnea or recurrent respiratory tract infections in ASD? So in ASD, there is communication between left atrium and right atrium. So there is volume overload in the right ventricle. So this extra volume goes to the pulmonary artery. So there is pulmonary hypertension. So there is pulmonary overload. And this pulmonary overload causes interstitial edema. Due to that interstitial edema, there is exertional dyspnea. And as there is pulmonary edema or pulmonary overload, there is always chance of infection. That's why there is recurrent respiratory tract infections in ASD. Now, what are the signs of ASD? So the signs of ASD, the first one is left parasternal heave, wide and fixed splitting of S2 and ejection systolic murmur. So why there is left parasternal heave? Because from the left atrium, blood is going to the right atrium, from the right atrium to the right ventricle. So there is right ventricular overload. Due to this right ventricular overload, there is right ventricular hypertrophy. So due to right ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular overload, we get left parasternal heave. Then there is wide and fixed splitting of S2. Why there is wide and fixed splitting of S2? We know that S1 is due to the abrupt closure of mitral valve and tricuspid valve and S2 is due to the abrupt closure of aortic and pulmonary valve. So this one is M1, this one is T1. So both of this makes S1. So S1 is due to the closure of mitral valve and tricuspid valve. Now 
S2. This one is aortic valve. This one is pulmonary valve. A2, P2. Both of these makes S2. So S2 is due to the closure of aortic valve and pulmonary valve. Now normally there is a gap between A2 and P2. This is called physiological splitting. But in ASD there is left to right shunt. So there is extra amount of blood in the right atrium. That extra amount of blood goes to the right ventricle. And this extra amount of blood needs to pass through this pulmonary valve. As extra amount of blood is going through this pulmonary valve, pulmonary valve needs time to close. So pulmonary valve closes lately. That's why there is a wide gap, extended gap between A2 and P2. That is called pathological splitting. So this is the reason why in ASD there is a wide and fixed splitting of S2. Now why there is ejection systolic murmur in ASD? In ASD, as there is right ventricular overload, there is extra volume in the right ventricle. So this extra amount of volume needs to be passed through this pulmonary valve. Needs to be ejected through this pulmonary valve. So why, when this extra amount of blood is being ejected through this pulmonary valve, there is a turbulence. Because we know that murmur is due to the normal blood flow through abnormal valve or abnormal blood flow through normal valve. So here my pulmonary valve is normal, but in the right ventricle there is extra amount of blood. So this abnormal amount of blood is going through this normal valve so that there is a turbulence and that turbulence is murmur. So now obviously whenever this right ventricular volume is being ejected and that ejection is during systole, that's why it is ejection systolic murmur in ASD. Now the investigations and treatment. So what are the investigations for ASD? So in the investigation first one is ECG chest x-ray then echocardiogram in ECG we may get partial RBV right bundle branch block and in chest x-ray we may get increased pulmonary vascular markings due to pulmonary hypertension and in echocardiogram we may get right atrium right ventricle and pulmonary artery enlargement or dilated and then Doppler echo demonstrates turbulence through it and paradoxical motion of IVS with right ventricular hypertrophy. So the treatment. So the treatment of ASD is the surgical closure. Surgical closure includes the opening of that atrium and then patch closure of that defect and transcatheter device closure. Nowadays devices are available to close that defect. These are umbrella like devices like amplates or septal occluder or like this. And then medical management. Medical management is uh, like antiarrhythmic therapy for associated atrial fibrillation or supraventricular tachycardia. And if there is significant pulmonary hypertension, we can use phosphodesters and germ inhibitor like sildenafil. So this is all about ASD. Hope you like this video. Please give your feedback in the comments below and subscribe to this channel for next videos. Thank you.
Thank you.